Student scientists, my name is Dr. Ginger Ale. I'm a food scientist at the Super Duper Soda Factory and I need your help. I've invented a new soda, but my equipment for measuring the amount of sugar in my new soda is acting up. So I have no way of figuring out how much sugar is in the soda. Now I can't fill out the nutrition label. I heard about your student scientist team from the researchers on the Science Adventure Lab. What is so great about the student scientist team? There are a million other science teams that could help us figure this mystery out. Well, the student scientist team happens to have some of the brightest and most creative students in Washington State. So of course I'd want to recruit their brain power and assistance in this dilemma. But Dr. Ale, why does it even matter how much sugar is in our soda? As long as people want to drink it, isn't that all that matters? Ah, but you forget the goal of the Super Duper Soda Factory. We're trying to make a soda with less sugar in it, and without the student scientist team, we have no way of measuring the sugar content of our soda. Less sugar? Then it'll be less sweet. Who's going to drink that? Lots of people. Many people are trying to stay healthy, so consuming too much sugar is something they think about when choosing the foods and drinks that are part of their diet. So, without the student scientist team's help, we might be making a soda that actually has more sugar in it than might be healthy. We have no way of telling how much sugar is in our new soda. Still, what is the problem with eating so much sugar? Why should people worry about how much sugar they eat or drink? There are a lot of different health problems that develop because of excessive sugar consumption. Eating too much sugar is bad for your teeth. Plus, it can cause problems like obesity or diabetes. When you eat too much sugar, it gets stored in your body as fat, which contributes to obesity. Diabetes is a disease that occurs when your body can't use all the sugar you take in. I see now. Well, if the student scientist team is going to help us out in seeking the sugar solution, there are some important vocabulary words they may want to learn. You're right. One important term to learn is reagent. A reagent is a chemical used to detect or measure the presence of another substance. When you do your experiment on the Science Adventure Lab, you will be using a reagent developed by Dr. Stanley Benedict, a famous sugar scientist. Benedict's reagent changes color depending on how much sugar is in the liquid. Benedict's reagent is blue, but it changes to red through a chemical reaction if a liquid has sugar in it. Remember this when you bore the Science Adventure Lab. But how are we supposed to know what the color of Benedict's reagent is telling us? It doesn't seem very scientific to just say that there is more sugar. We still won't be able to tell how much sugar there actually is in our soda. Right. In order to be able to effectively use a reagent, such as Benedict's reagent, we need to also have a set of standards. In a scientific experiment, standards give you something to compare to. In your experiment, you'll know how much sugar is in the standards so you'll be able to compare the color of my new soda to the color of the standards. That way, you'll know how much sugar is in my new soda. Wait, I'm still confused. Well, imagine you took a test and your score was 10. How would you know if 10 was a good or a bad score? It would depend on the total possible number of points, of course. Right. You can't tell unless you have something to compare to. So if the test was out of 10, you would have gotten a 10 out of 10, a perfect score. If the test was out of 100, you would have gotten 10 out of 100, which is far less of a great score. Just like you need to know the total points possible in a test, an experimental standard is a way to put the results you are getting from your experiment into context, because you know the value of the standards. Got it. So the standard the student scientist team uses will help them to understand how much sugar is in our new soda when they use Benedict's reagent. These terms seem really important to understanding how to do the experiment. Oh, also, don't you think there are some skills the student scientist team may want to practice before doing the experiment aboard the Science Adventure Lab? For example, they may want to learn how to measure exact volumes of liquid into their test tubes. Already ahead of you! I sent transfer pipettes and other supplies to your school. Please watch as we demonstrate how to properly use a transfer pipette. You'll get a chance to practice pipetting with your teacher before the Science Adventure Lab arrives. Transfer pipettes are valuable tools for measuring small volumes of liquid. 
Volume is the amount of space that's taken up by a liquid, and transfer pipettes are an easy way to measure the volume. First, squeeze the bulb of the transfer pipette, just like you would with an eyedropper. Next, lower the tip completely into the solution while you're still squeezing the bulb between your fingers. Remember that if you put the tip in the liquid and then squeeze the bulb, you'll blow bubbles and that makes it hard to measure accurately. Measure out your liquid by slowly releasing the bulb and freezing your fingers in place when the liquid reaches the volume you want. Then you can transfer the liquid to your test tube and squirt it out by squeezing the bulb again. It works best if you use slow, gentle pressure with your fingers. That way you don't get any air bubbles in the pipette. If there are air bubbles in there, you might not be measuring the right amount, so it's best to squirt it out and start over. This is a good skill to learn, because measuring accurately is an important part of doing science experiments. Well, student scientists, I hope you're up to the challenge to help us test our new soda to see how much sugar it contains so we can fill out the Nutrition Facts label. Good luck!